Continuing our Samisa discussion, we are con we, we are on a Gatha Seven, and uh, we'll continue the part. For first, we'll sing that Gatha. <coughs> <coughs> Danchanam jana go suddho Harigi <coughs> Chari tradarasan agnana prana vyavahar katane gnanine Chari tranahi darasan nahi nahi gnana gnaya kasudhache Samisa Gatha Seva. <coughs> So here we are discussing that Tanja, so I'm going to put the slides on. <coughs> okay, so what we are talking about, and uh, uh, we are talking about seven stanza, it is basically further extension of the sixth stanza and the crux of the thing in seven stanza it says that if we are concentrating on the soul substance nothing but the soul substance we are not having any reflective thoughts of for any worldly affair at all and now i'm in meditating posture and i'm just saying i'm the knowledge I'm the attribute, I, 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 the knowledge attribute, 
I have the faith attribute, I have the conduct attribute, I have an eternal existence attribute, I have substance with attribute, like that my soul's attribute only I'm meditating on. <clears throat> nothing else. Remember, nothing else. And Kun Kun Swami says, still you won't get the Samyak Darshan. Wait a second. I mean, you know, I, I gave up all my worldly thoughts. I just detached myself from all worldly affairs and everything. And now, I am just concentrating on the attributes of the soul. <clears throat> Till Kun Kun Swami says, you won't get it. You won't get some impression. So that's what it says in this uh, stanza. So the, uh, what it is that uh, the medium of explanation is a division of the attributes. <clears throat> so omniscient Lord, he knows indivisibility of, of our soul substance with the attributes he had experience <clears throat> and he is giving discourses in the form of omkar dwani last time we talked about it so but but the the rest of the transmigratory soul including our uh, monks our uh, muniraj and sixth and seven gunsthana our Sravak, who is on fifth Gunstana, our, our, our Gurudev, who is on a fourth Gunstana, those are the those are the personalities that they have medium of expression is spoken words, and spoken words can only be said in the divisional aspect. So the the the, the student is very intelligent, very smart, very learned. So he's asking questions. He says. <coughs> That the explanation of the soul is done through conventional point of view. Why? Because, uh, because the Muniraj will say, soul has a knowledge, soul has a faith attribute, soul has a conduct attribute. So he divides those things because the indivisibility of the soul substance cannot be expressed. <clears throat> In a 28th stanza of uh, Apurva Osar, uh, Srimadji writes the stanza. It says, Jepada Sri Sarvagne Dithyu Gnanama Kahi Sakya Nai Tepana Sri Bhagavan Jo Teha Vani Ne Ateha Tattva Ne Anya Vani Te Sunkahe Anubhava gochara matra rahu te gnana jo o apurva avasara evo kyare avase. Even omniscient Lord who has experienced the eternal soul substance and he is engrossed in his forever, he is unable to give the, <clears throat> he is unable to explain in the words. The limitation of the words are there. So it has to be explained only the division form. So one is explaining in the conventional form, means in the division form. But says that one has to understand the absolute point of view. The medium of explanation is a divisional, and understanding has to be done in indivisible pattern. So the student asks the question, therefore, conventional point of view is a reason for absolute point of view, right? That's a question. Student is very smart. He's very learning. He wants to make sure that there is no room for any confusion because when we go to 11 stanza, we are on 7 stanza, when we go to 11 stanza, Samisar will say, Conventional point of view is wrong. And over here, we are saying that conventional point of view is explained. I have to understand the absurd point of view. Therefore, conventional point of view is a reason for absolute point of view. And in 11 stanza, you are telling me that conventional point of view is wrong. So, where is the confusion? Because it's a very, very, very fine point over here. And the student has raised this issue 
And so uh, uh, Kun Swami gives the answer. What he he gives the answer? <coughs> he says, "Yes, there are limitations of the spoken words. Spoken words cannot express everything." I'm happy right now. Express my happiness. How can I express? I could be smiling. I could be dancing. I could be sitting in a corner. I could be meditating. I'm happy. How can I express in a spoken words? It's not possible. Words are the medium of expression and explanation. Because, because of our limitation of transmitting knowledge, only words are the Media of expression and explanation. And so Muniraj, who is an intense self experience of the soul substance, he's experiencing, but when he's expressing, he cannot express his own experience because words are having limitations. So, so one has to explain only in the divisional aspect. For example, well, let's see that the last week I, I, I went to temple and I had a great, great, great time. Somebody says, how do you explain? What, what, what do you mean by great time? Well, I had a great time. What, what, explain to me. Well, I went there and I did the Abhishek, I did the Puja and I did the scripture, reading of the scripture. Then we had a Swadhyay, we had a discussion, then we had an Aarti, I met lots of people and, and all kind of things when I'm talking, when I'm in the temple and experiencing all that thing, I'm experiencing in the, in the indivisible pattern. When I'm describing, I'm describing one at a time. I did the puja, I did swadhyay, I did abhishek, all kind of things I did is I dis, di, explain in the divisional aspect. And when I'm explaining in divisional aspect, and I'm explaining to you, you said, but still, I don't understand. How can you have a, have a, a how, how much happiness you get it by performing abhishek, or by performing puja, or by scripture reading? or by doing swadhyaya and everything. Then I had to say, you have to come with me. And then you will know how much joy you get it. So experiencing will give the joy. But exp explanation is kind of limited explanations are there. <clears throat> One, so that's why the, the, uh, the Muniraj, our spiritual teacher, enlightened teacher, they will explain the real nature of the soul in divisional aspect. But at the same time, he says, wait a second, I'm explaining you in divisional aspect, but you have to understand in the absolute indivisible form. Your, your imbibation, your understanding, you, 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 your understanding of the reality has to be made in the indivisible pattern. And therefore, therefore, the conventional point of view is only medium of explanation and, uh, uh, and, uh, and expression. But I should not take refuge in that one because it's a divisional form. Divisional form gives reflective thought. Reflective thought never gives primary abstract comprehension. Vikalp Atmak Dasha Kadapi nirvikalp dasha apti nathi. Primary abstract comprehension is a nirvikalp dasha. Reflective thought is a vikalp dasha. My thought process is going on, my thought process. That's a vikalp. And in vikalp, there is no experiencing. And in experiencing phase, there is no vikalp. So these are the things that our teacher says, Yes, my medium is a divisional aspect, but you have to accept in the indivisible pattern and don't take refuge in that divisional pattern. So conventional form is simply a medium of explanation of the eternal soul substance. Because I can't explain to you indivisibility because you have not experienced indivisibility at all since time infinite. I'm the sole substance. 
every living being is a soul substance starting from nigod all the way to five sense uh, human beings like us everybody has they have the capacity to know <clears throat> but my knowledge is kind of limited is blunted and that's why i cannot understand the indivisibility i have never experienced indivisibility experiencing indivisibility means some exertion which we don't have it so because we don't have it so he has to explain only in the divisional aspect yeah last time we said about it so acharya bhagwan says listen you have not experienced the indivisibility but have you experienced anger yes that's not your form have you experienced ego yes that's not your status have you experienced the uh, uh, greed yes you to get rid of it so this kind of things he explains that way and then he says your soul has uh, 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 knowledge attribute that knowledge attribute can be divided into five forms and all kind of things he talks about faith attribute he talks about um, perception attribute so he explains everything in divisional form because i have experienced the divisions so conventional form is a medium of explanation for the eternal soul substance now eternal soul substance has assimilated all its differences of the attributes as well as more if you just take the soul substance and if you dissect that soul substance right now theoretically then you'll find out that this eternal soul substance has infinite attributes and infinite modes but they are part of each and every part of the whole eternal soul substance there is a pond this the 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 uh, moonless night is there and the pond is quiet and all the millions of stars are getting reflected in this pond water and i as a dummy person says oh i want to see that where is that exact reflection of that star in the water so i dive into the water what do i feel i feel the coolness of the water only i don't see any at at uh, uh, stars or anything at all just plain pure coolness of the water i experience same way if i enter into the soul substance i said i would like to see knowledge i would like to see uh, uh, faith attributes i would like to see conduct attributes nothing you will just simply if you just enter the soul substance you feel the eternal uh, if you feel the super senses bliss and it's it's a full knowledge that's all you experience because the all the substance the all the attributes and modes are intermingled with each other with the soul substance and their indivisible pattern so what happens next one is been entangled in the eternal transmigration with its associative misery what am i doing since time infinite i have directed my faith to the to the external of substances i have directed my faith to the alien objects of the universe par padarth par padarth par shraddha gunni paryayishe so my faith is been directed to the alien objects par padarth every moment every moment a mode arises a paryay arises and it is directing the attention to the alien objects of the universe what are these alien objects of the universe you don't have to go far away my body my body is me my body is me my body is that kind of attitude i have it even in sleep i have that attitude and so i'm directing my attention to the alien object means the body generally and that's why i'm entangled with this eternal transmigration my faith faith is only the problem which has been directed to it, uh, alien object and that's why i have eternal transmigration 
Only the way to get out of it is to have faith directed to the eternal soul substance. Acharya Bhagwan says, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that easiest thing for one to be remaining in, its, in his innate form. Instead of that, you transmigratory soul, Acharya Bhagwan says, you transmigratory soul, you take the extra effort to look for the alien objects and then direct your attention to the alien. How, how come you don't do so much work? Why can't you just remain endorsed in your eternal soul substance in the innate form? So to get rid of this misery is just redirecting my attention to the eternal soul substance. And that's my Purusharth. Purusharth means nothing to be done, nothing to be done except my attention from alien object to be redirected to my eternal soul substance. That's a Purusharth. So here, even though attributes have their own characteristics, they are in the unity with the soul substance. Remember, each attribute has its own independence. But in the soul substance, they are having indivisibility. Soul substance has an innumerable space point, a Sankhyat Pradeshi, innumerable space point. Each attribute is spread through all these innumerable space points. So knowledge attribute is represented in each and every space point of the innumerable space point of the soul substance. So is a faith attribute, so is a you know, conduct attribute, and so are the all the infinite attributes are represented in those innumerable space points. So if I take one space point theoretically, then that one space point has all the infinite attributes represented in that one. So, even though the attributes have indivisibility with the soul substance, but they don't lose their identity. They don't simply merge into each other. They remain indivisible with the soul substance, but maintain their identity they particularly perform their own work and do not interfere in any other attributes function. Knowledge attribute only will produce knowledge more. Faith attribute will produce only faith more. Conduct attribute will only produce conduct at, um, more and everything. So are the infinite attributes. They will produce their own modes all the time. So even though they are indivisible, they are still maintaining their identity. Certain perspective attributes are having their own individuality. As we said, knowledge is, knowledge mode comes only from the knowledge attribute. Perception modes come only from the perception attribute. Faith mode comes only from the faith attribute. So that way, all the attributes they have their all of they have their own individuality, but from certain other perspective, they are also having unity with the soul substance. It all depends which perspective you are looking at it. The basis for Jain principle is uh, uh, um, Swami propagated principle of multiplicity point of view. That is only the philosophy in this on this earth that gives the multiplicity point of view as the basis for the existence so same thing the same attribute if i look from attribute perspective they have their own individuality but then i look from the soul substance perspective then all the attribute they have indivisibility so they have their individuality and indivisibility both together and that is called multiplicity point of view anekantvad individuality and indivisibility that exactly opposite things but they are present in the same substance 
And that's why it is multiplicity point of view, which is the basis for Jain principles. Other philosophies, they say, you Jains are crazy. Why? Because just come to conclusion that do you want individuality or do you want indiv indivisibility? Why do you bring, mix both the things together? And we have to say to those people that because you don't understand the reality. In the same substance, for example, eternity is there on the same substance at a given time, there is also transiency present. So they said, why didn't you say eternity or transiency? Why, don't you, why do you mix both? Yes, I mix both. Otherwise, I cannot establish the uh, 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 entity as such. If one understand, one one feels that soul is a, 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 a eternal existence and nothing, soul is immutable. Nothing changes. Nothing means nothing means nothing changes. In the philosophy, it is that way. Vedant philosophy is that way. And if that is a case, if soul is only, only immutable or only eternal or only non-performer, then who ends up making this rag and dvesh every moment? If I'm the, uh, I'm the immutable, I'm eternal, and I don't make any changes within me, so I'm pure. So then where is the impurity? Every moment you see the impurity, I am I'm, 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 I'm anger, deceit, ego, greed, all those things are happening within me. Where will you put those things? So that will refute that theory, that soul is only eternal in existence. Then on the other side, Buddhist philosophy will say, soul is transient. Soul is a doer and soul is a transient. So that means every moment a new soul is born according to Buddhist philosophy. The question Jains ask them, okay, if you believe that the soul is a momentary in existence and that this soul, this soul committed crime and killed somebody, for example, I had a gun with me and I, I pulled the trigger and the person died. So purposefully, I, I did that violence. But if my soul is transient, the soul who did the action, he died. The next moment, new soul comes. So in the future, the another soul which gets born, he ends up getting suffering. Wait a second. You do the crime and I get punishment? Previous soul did the crime and future soul gets, gets punishment? So that is not, uh, not feasible. So Jain philosophy says, this soul is eternal, means it is always there forever and ever and ever, but at the same time, the changes occur in the soul also every moment. And that's why me as a soul, I'm eternal, but if I perform something wrong today, in the future, me as, my, me as a soul only will get the suffering. Or I did something good today, I'm the one who is going to endure some fruits in the future. Can you uncle? Yes. Oh, hi. Uh, can I ask, uh, can I make a comment here? Go ahead. Going back to when you talked about uh, Anikantvad and... Mm -hmm. um, uh, always, um, uh, how do you say it? the eternal presence of the soul and also it's transient. So I just asked some more questions and this is the answer I got. And so you can correct it. Okay. So if you look at the soul, then in a Pradesh, at every space point, the soul is like, a, a you can consider it like a brick. And I think we talked about this in a slide in the past, like a Vignan gun with, with three axes, yes. with time, space, and attributes. Yeah. And then the interior of that individual Pradesh of the soul is eternal. But the exterior, the surface of that brick, if you will, is like 
is the changing part. So that's how I was. In the probably that understanding what you say probably comes from that ocean example. That ocean is a permanent, and when you're sitting on the on beach, on the beach, then you see the transient transiency of the wave. They come and break and come and break and come and break forever. So transience is there and eternity is also there in the form of ocean being eternal and waves being transient. This is for the explanation purpose only, remember. Because this is the, eter this is the soul which is uh, indivisibility in nature with a soul is intermingled with its all is in uh, innumerable space point with the all infinite attributes and infinite modes from past, present and future buried inside so when you dissect the soul there is nothing like surface or the deep part or anything it is one big block that's it and changes are also occurring there and permanency also is there so it, it is one you know we give uh, the, the uh, acharya Bhagwan gives example to convey the point to convey the message the, the example may not be hundred percent it's, it's called ek desh example, means the example is only partial. It will just give partial understanding. But is that it is, is something happening on the surface and something deep inside there is no changes, nothing like that. Every space point keeps on changing. Every space point keeps on changing in the sense the, the modes are arising from each and every uh, um, attributes from each and every space point, at the same time, soul itself remains immutable, eternal, non-doer, just stable, you know. So those are the things that we have to understand. So over here, it gives perspective. It gives us two perspectives. That from the in, uh, um, uh, attribute perspective, they have individuality. From soul's perspective, they have unity. And those are the things we have to have deep seated understanding in our mind. Once again, it won't be inappropriate to put that multiplicity point of view definition that in a given substance, at a given time, two exactly opposite things residing, that is called multiplicity point of view. Actually, the real word is mutually contradictory point of view. Because permanence is there and transience is there. Both are together in a given substance. You can't say that, okay, this is permanent and this is transient. So this is multiplicity point of view. There are two substances involved. Jane's uh, uh, definition is not that one. Only in a given substance, two opposite properties residing at a given time is called multiplicity point of view or anekant. So we have to have that point clear. From this perspective, for example, if attributes are there, individuality means there are infinite attributes are there. But when we look from the soul substance, there is only one entity is there. So infinite entity and one entity residing together and that is anekantvad so we have to have clarity in our mind this is the basic definition that you know if people make lots of mistake by not understanding this definition well you know i go to church also and i go to temple also and uh, i believe in anekantvad wherever it's good i just accept it that's the you are just you are killing the principle on ekantvad by saying that way because i went to church and i went to the temple two separate entities are there you cannot have two separate entity from multiplicity point of view it's only one entity Two opposite subs, two opposite properties residing. That is anekantvad. So make sure that we have we are clear with that principle. <clears throat> now, for an enlightened person, the eternal true nature of the self and its aim is never been lost. Remember, how did a, a, a living being become an enlightened person? 
Number, number one, enlightenment occurs only in the five sense, sentient being. I'm the five sense, sentient human being. I can become an enlightened person. The animals, higher level of animals, like elephant or a horse or a dog, or those are the ones, they are five sense with sentiency. Sentiency means they can understand right from wrong. For example, butterfly. Butterfly has no sentiency. So what happens? Butterflies looks at the light, flame, and gets attracted and gets burned out and loses, each, uh, loses the light. Second butterfly does the same thing. Nobody learns from anybody's experience. Here, if I'm driving today and I went into, I was driving fast and went into the accident, tomorrow I have that experience, so I will drive carefully. So uh, I have the mind to think about it. So anybody with the mind, with the five senses, humans, higher form of animals, even the infernal cells and the celestial being, all four groups of uh, living beings, they can get enlightenment. How do I get enlightenment? Basically, my aim, which was directed to the alien objects of the universe, I bring it back to my eternal soul substance. And once I do that, that means I have a right faith. That means I'm an enlightened person. And then that aim never gets lost in general. There are, there are certain ways it can be lost, but we are not going to, we are just going to think the major highway right now. Yes, if I experience myself, that means I'm enlightened and that's it. It remains with me forever. Means my, even though I have my faith attribute directed to my inner self. I'm the enlightened person, and now I'm directing my attention to outside worldly object and end up doing rag and dvesh, inclusion of attachment and inclusion of aversion. Still, still, my conviction is to my eternal soul substance that never gets lost. For example, Ankit, you are there. You are working. You are doing operation. You are extremely putting your attention to the operation that you are performing. At that time, do you forget that you are Ankit? It's already been the back of your mind. That is always there that I'm Ankit. I'm Ankit Mehta. That, that, that understanding is always there. When I wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning, I don't have to go to the mirror and say, hey, you know what? You are kidding. Don't forget, okay? Next 24 hours, you remember. I have conviction, deep-seated conviction that I don't need to remember all the time. Same, same way, enlightened person, once he has directed his faith to the eternal soul substance, he could be doing any other activities of the worldly affair, but his conviction that I am the eternal soul that never gets lost. So that's very important thing to consider, you know. <clears throat> and as I said, there are certain things that their enlightenment can go away. But again, that is not our, uh, our things to discuss right now. Because why should I worry about losing the things when I'm getting jackpot? Of, eater, of enlightenment, why do you want to lose it? So there are, there are certain things in the um, uh, spiritual development stages, Gunstana, that it is also possible sometimes, occasionally, somebody can lose that enlightenment, but that is transiently only, again, we'll receive it. So let's, let's put that point on the side and don't dwell on this one, because I don't want to go on that path at all. I'm going to go on the straight path, getting enlightenment, continue that one, and go up to the fifth stage, fourth stage, to fifth stage, to sixth stage, to, to uh, twelfth stage, thirteenth stage, and liberation. <clears throat> so his aim is 
always eternal true nature of the same. Remember, faith has two directions only. Either it's get direct, directed to the eternal soul substance, or it's get directed to the alien objects of the universe. Once I brought the attention to my eternal soul substance, it stays there forever. So this part is gone, other part is gone. So I have only one faith remaining, that's the eternal nature of the soul substance. That's it, and that's called enlightenment. Yes, I can still have the rag and dvesh in a fourth, fourth spiritual development stage, fifth spiritual development stage, even sixth spiritual development stage. I can have rag and dvesh, but they are so minuscule, so minuscule, they're as good as having nothing. <clears throat> when we do, I think there are this, uh, several slides are coming in this pattern, uh, I think after five, ten slides. It will just tell us, that uh, Gnani means enlightened person is been said that he never binds any karma. And that's a relative statement. When we come to that part, we'll be talking more about it. But right now, enlightened person has his faith, never gets lost. In the experiencing phase, now the enlightened person is experiencing his eternal soul substance. What happens? His faith is only on the eternal true nature of the self only. Yes. He does not hear, he does not perceive any differences of attribute. He is just experiencing the indivisibility of the soul substance. He is experiencing the immutability of the soul substance in which all the inter, uh, infinite attributes are intermingled in the form of indivis indivisibility. So he doesn't experience any differences. If at all he perceives differences, then he is in the reflective thought and he's out of experience. Remember, I have the reflective thoughts right now on the soul. I'm the eternal soul substance, I'm the all knower soul substance. I have the reflective thoughts. And if I'm in this reflective thoughts all the time continuously, or of course I don't see anything, I don't think about anything of the worldly affair, but I just remain in these reflective thoughts all the time, then I'm not going to get the experience of the soul. Experience is beyond reflective thoughts. Reflective thought is called vikalp. And beyond that is called primary abstract comprehension, means nirvikalpta. So when I'm in the vikalp stage, I don't have nirvikalpta. When I'm in nirvikalp stage, I don't have any vikalp. So the, the, in experiencing phase, I'm experiencing only true nature of the self. And that's it. I don't perceive any differences at all. Differences means reflective thoughts, means out of experience. <clears throat> For example, Danka, yeah. The vikalp and nirvikalp, I didn't get that. Okay. Vikalp means thought process. And nirvikalp means beyond thought process. For example, well, if my kid is getting graduation, I'm going to do this, 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 and this thing on the graduation day. I'm going to go to the school. I'm going to take him to outside for enjoyment or whatever, whatever. And I'm going to do this, this, that. I'm going to out do a party. Those are called vikalp. Those are called reflective thoughts, preparations, and all the things. Now that actual day comes for your kid's graduation, you just forget about those thoughts. You just get and grows in the enjoyment that you are getting throughout the day. So this is kind of gross way of ex explanation. Second, the second way of explaining is, let's remember that I'm extremely tired right now and I want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I'm, 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 I come home extremely tired and I just say, listen, I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep. Don't, nobody bothers me, nobody bothers me. I want to go to sleep. I, those kind of reflective thoughts that keep on re repeating again and again and again in my mind, I won't go to sleep. But I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. I want to go to sleep. 
want to go to sleep and then suddenly I go to sleep that even those thoughts are gone now and that is called nirvikalpta kind of gross way of expl explanation so spirit uncle I'm sorry for interrupting yeah but does that mean a pure soul has nirvikalpta yes and a non-pure soul has vikal yes but, is that your point is you're trying to say right well but remember you are the pure soul Remember, a self-aware, conscious, pure soul I'm the, has nirvilka. Yeah. I am the, by, by nature, I am the pure soul, but because I am in the reflective thought process phase, that I don't experience the eternity and uh, indivisibility of the soul substance. Oh. So to understand, to experience that one, I have to go away from this reflective thought. Remember, first reflective thoughts I have for the whole world. I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to run my family, I have to buy grocery, I have to run around. So those are the worldly affair reflective thoughts. Then I give up those reflective thoughts of the worldly affair and I get engrossed in the reading, scriptural reading. And that also is a reflective thought. I'm, I'm reasoning it out. What does Gurudev say over here? Why did he say like that? What is the what does it mean that way? No, I did not understand. I need to ask somebody. All those things are reflective thoughts. Okay, from scripture, now you understand something, and now you are imbibing and you are just going in meditative phase, so-called meditative phase, because it's not meditation, but we call lack of better we call it. in meditative phase. Now I close my eye. I detach myself from worldly affair and I said, I'm the soul substance. I'm eternal soul substance. I'm the all knower soul substance. I have the knowledge attribute. I have the faith attribute. I have no relationship with outside material objects. All those things are still reflective thoughts. Even though I'm not involved in worldly affair at all, but still they are reflective thoughts and I won't get a summary version. Hmm. So, some ignition will occur only when I quiet down these reflective thoughts and then gradually I just enter into the primary abstract comprehension which is the experiencing phase. In the experiencing phase there are no reflective thoughts. Okay. Stanza 143 Samaisar and thereafter Amrut Chandra Acharya Dev gave 20 uh, 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 Kalash on that one and he kept on hitting that one very 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 hard that reflective thoughts are also not the experience reflective oh. uh, of course they are the on the path to nirvikalpta they will come but I don't want to get stuck there I need to go beyond there to cross the boundary of reflective thoughts and go to Thank you. That helped. Good. So now, enlightened one again. Faith can be only of two types, as we said, to the self or to the alien beings. Faith is directed to the eternal, indivisible soul substance. Who who does that? Enlightened person does that. Enlightened person has directed his faith, has directed his faith to indivisible soul substance. Then, from knowledge perspective, one knows self as well as alien beings, but he ends up knowing soul substance as well as attributes and modes. See, knowledge can know everything, but Faith just says, you know what, that knowledge knows all the things and then faith says, okay knowledge, you settle down on this subject only. Eternal soul substance with indivisibility of the attributes and mode, you settle down on that thought only or, or that process only. So knowledge for ultimately rests there. So what it says over here, adorable thing for enlightened person is only all know soul substance and even though he knows attributes and modes and all the things and the alien objects and everything but his adorable thing 
is only knowing the soul substance and he does not perceive any division of the attributes also so he that is in experiencing phase enlightened one has this kind of attitude occurring that he forgets everything else and he has one simple concentration on the eternal soul substance and it's a primary abstract comprehensive state right knowledge what's right knowledge with right faith there is right knowledge samyak darshan and samyak gnan are two sides of a coin samyak darshan and samyak gnan occurs at the same time at the same moment see what i what i did first i gather the information to start with i'm an ignorant soul i started listening to the discourses the my my my, my uh, enlightened teacher said okay these are the thought process i'm giving give you plus you also read the scriptures and everything so i listen to the uh, lectures i read the scriptures and i gather the knowledge for the soul substance knowledge starts knowledge gathering is very first process starts and now that knowledge gathering i try to concentrate on that and i make it compact nature of that knowledge to keep it on the eternal soul substance and now i know who am i what is my real nature when i know that uh, that thing it is still reflective thought process but now i know that my true form is eternal soul substance and my alien objects directed attention is wrong and so now i tell my faith attribute that hey you know what i know the right thing i know the eternal soul substance and its nature and only the way we can get further ahead is only by you faith you bring your attention from alien object to the eternal soul substance so knowledge ask the faith attributes to redirect is the attention from away from the alien object towards the eternal soul substance once the faith gets directed to the soul substance right away there is called right faith and right away the knowledge is called right knowledge both are together he knows the eternal true nature of the self as well as inclusion of attachment etc also right knowledge knows everything right knowledge has no limitation only faith has limitation of either or faith could be eternal soul substance or faith could be to the alien objects only two things knowledge can see everything knowledge can perceive everything remember siddha bhagwan and aryan bhagwan they have omniscient knowledge what do they know they know past present and future of all the universal substances because knowledge has a capacity to know so knowledge knows everything but faith is only one 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 way only either it's a alien object or to the uh, eternal soul substance <coughs> that means he has the knowledge of absolute point of view as well as conventional point of view remember what happened here the knowledge knows the eternal soul substance and knowledge knows the alien object like inclusion of attachment etc so that means knowledge has a absolute point of view of knowing eternal soul substance and conventional point of view of knowing inclusion of attachment etc all the alien objects of the universe so knowledge knows everything in <coughs> acharya bhagwan says simply reading scripture is not the right knowledge i read the I, i read the scripture i listen to the lectures i discuss the question the question to the um, um, learned people and everything but that is not the right knowledge right knowledge can only be said when there is associated right faith and right faith means taking faith away from the alien objects redirecting 
to the eternal soul substance. So when my faith gets directed to the eternal soul substance, then what on knowledge I have, everything is called right knowledge. Right now, my right now, my knowledge is not called right knowledge. It is called the, 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 the uh, kshayopsham of the knowledge. Nano kshayopsham, that's a word. Nano kshayopsham means capacity to understand. Okay, I can understand Samaisa, I can understand the first stanza, I can understand the second stanza. And so those are the understanding. Some people, they don't understand anything. Like for example, Mahavi Swami's life, when he got a right faith, Samyak Darshan, in what Gati he was in, what realm of existence he was in, he was a lion. Now, tell me, when did the lion go out and raid Samaisar? Lion did not do all the things. He had only conviction. When, when those two monks from the sky came back and they thought, they said, while they are moving in the sky, they said, oh my God, this is the lion who is killing the deer and eating the deer meat and everything. And he is a Bhavi Tirthankar. He is a future Tirthankar. He is a future Mahavir. So they descended and they gave discourses in the lion's language. Lion understood. And he directed the fate towards his eternal soul substance, and there was the Samyak Darshan. So you don't, you you may not need all the all the scriptural knowledge and everything. If you understand very well, you understand the nature of the soul and everything, then you can direct your fate to the eternal soul substance. But it is so complicated, it appears that you have to put your own effort to understand all this thing. And that's what you guys are doing. That's what we are doing it for last two, three years. That uh, to understand, understand, understand the intricacy of this uh, uh, scriptural in intricacies. <clears throat> so until now, what we just said, this is the end of the stanza in the form that what uh, uh, Amrath Chanachara wrote down. And thereafter, Jason Acharya, he wrote down Bhavarth. He wrote down further explanation with his own way. He wrote down, and that's called Bhavarth. So we are going on Bhavarth, means further explanation in this stanza. So basically what we knew so far, more or less same thing will come from different perspective maybe. But otherwise, it is the same thing that what we knew so far. So basically, by listening to the Bhavarth and everything, we really solidify our knowledge that exactly who am I, what is my nature, what am I supposed to do. So here it says, mode can be pure or impure state by its own nature. We know that part very well. Mode has its own independence. Mode means Pariyai. Pariyai could be pure. Pariyai could be impure by its own nature. There was a big discussion occurred uh, with a group of uh, Pandits and uh, Gurudevsi in uh, uh, Madhuban several years back. And uh, Gurudev said, mode can be pure or impure state by its own nature, by its innate nature. And people didn't accept. People went against and they argued. They say, if, if it is innate nature, innate nature, then it can never go away. See, this is very, very, very delicate, deep thinking is there, but bear with me. If, the, if it is an innate nature of any given thing, it remains with that substance forever. And Gurudev said, yes, that's true, but I'm talking about mode here. Mode's existence is one Samai only. So for one Samai, that mode has its own independence. Soul substance is eternal in nature. So soul is innate form in, a, in, in its own eternal form because it, eternity is there. But mode is of dependent, mode lives only for one Samai. 
in that mode also its own independence. Remember one samay we just said blink of an eye, innumerable samay pass by. So in those innumerable samay means 10 to 49 and beyond. In that time frame, one mode came and it was a important that mode was important by itself because it, it 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 decided by itself to be pure or impure by itself the alien object simply acts as instrumental cause when mode becomes impure this mode my mode is arising right now and suddenly it decided to become impure means my mode decided to pay the attention to the alien objects my mode decided to pay, pay, put the attention to my body. So my body became nimit karan, instrumental cause, but mode was a primary reason for that situation. Mode by itself decided to be in the impure, impure state. Modal impurity should not be considered as eternal soul substance's impurity. Eternal soul substance is pure and pure and pure forever. It doesn't interfere in anybody else's. But in that eternal soul substance, modes are there. And these modes have their own mind. They can be impure. They can be pure. And soul substance cannot interfere in that pattern. Even though they all are in indivisible fashion. <clears throat> even by consideration of the divisional aspect of the attribute creates Ra. Now, if I think about divisional aspect of attributes it produces rag why we already have talked before and i think we are already about uh, time is coming up so let me just fully finish this bullet and we'll continue next week uh, for the discussion one should avoid all these pitfalls and concentrate only on the eternal true nature of the indivisible nature of the soul substance <clears throat> subject matter for right faith samyakdashan is eternal true nature of the soul and activity in the mode now directs its fate to the eternal true nature of the individual soul substance and therefore i get enlightenment so this this needs a lot more explanation so we will continue next week because we are already i think beyond our time so any questions so far this is little complicated things that uh, you know it needs further explanation so i know you have lots of questions in your mind i can read your mind right now you know any questions so far <clears throat> if not then uh, i think next week is a time changing occurring when is the time change is occurring summer summer sunday sunday right so then uh, next week we will keep the same east coast time will be the same you know we we, uh, we arizona we are kind of wise or crazy i don't know because we don't change time because we don't change time you guys or whole country changes time so we get really messed up totally so then we'll continue nine o'clock eastern time but it will be six o'clock phoenix time you know we'll be three hours behind from summertime onwards next week onwards so we'll start at the uh, same time from east coast but uh, for the uh, arizona time it will be six o'clock evening rather than seven o'clock evening you know okay all right and i'll send the information to you in, in the email okay thank you can you please just send this uh, transcript also yes i'll send it after you okay okay thanks okay all right <coughs> Javani ke gyan se suje lo kalo Sovani mastak namo sada deta ho to Nine times no come on through
जय जिनेन्द्र विचाय विक्रम जय विक्रम जय जिनेन्द्र थैंक यू विचाय विक्रम जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र थैंक यू